Things a lot closer in the 600cc championship. Two points covering the first three. Steve Ives heading the championship table after winning last time at Thruxton. 600cc race then. We join at lap three. Jim Moody heads the field on a Yamaha. Moody leads, number 21. In second place, number five from South End on Sea, Phil Borley. In third place, the window fabricator, the man who makes and fits windows, Steve Ives, number 37. So Steve Ives on the Stockport Motorcycle Centre machine in third. Now, Ives is the championship leader on 28 points. None of the ma men in front of him can really bother him. Jim Moody is in 13th place in the championship standings. So if Steve Ives is getting the right sort of pit signals, and I'll ask the other Steve alongside of me, we have to assume he has, that he won't be panicking, will he? No, I don't think so. I mean, it, uh, from his point of view, he'd be quite happy for uh, Jim Moody to win the race because he's way down in the championship. But uh, he'd still like to be up there himself. But uh, he's... Uh, Really pulled it out the bag from this one, but he did qualify very well here today. But a lot of the front runners in the championship were way down on the grid. Mike Edwards was down in 17th position, Paul Brooks down in 23rd. So I don't know if some of the riders had problems this morning, but you can see as he breaks into that corner. In fact, he has uh, two softer front springs in the box, in my opinion, because the machine is bottoming out, causing the rear wheel to hop and skip, which is uh, causing it not to handle very well going into the hairpin. So he can look at this. Uh, way back and probably make some adjustments to his bike to make him lap here at Mallory Park faster. So there you are. Machine development courtesy of the BBC for Jim Moody. He can watch the tape and see what to do to set his bike up, but it certainly doesn't seem to be hampering his progress out of Gerrard's. But having said that, number five, Phil Borley now is really flying and Moody's bike seems to stretch out that gap just a fraction, coming up towards the S's. But Ives in third place is closing them down. The second place man, Phil Borley, has had one or two successful outings in the European series. He was 10th in Austria this year. In 1989, he got faster as the season went on, finishing in third place at Brands. He's rounding off 1990 in style because Borley is really storming on now, and he is, in fact, sitting in seventh place in the championship and could well pick up nine points from this one. And it's number five, Phil Borley, I'm talking about in second place. Steve Ives, number 37, right behind him. So these three now breaking away from number 16, John Reynolds on the Kawasaki in fourth. And I've just been informed that Gary Weston, who is in third, fourth position in the championship, is into the pit. So his race is run, and he's not going to gain any more points here today. But these three really stretching away now from the, the rest of the bunch. And Jim Moody is riding a wonderful race here. The fourth place man, I mentioned briefly at the start, uh, the, the fourth place man, John Reynolds, number 16, was excluded from the thruster meeting as Borley goes through on the inside. I'll have to put that remark on ice for a minute because it's all happening at the chicane here. Borley fighting up to Jim Moody. There's Reynolds, number 30 in your picture. Number 30 is a, a late entry. <laughs> give you that name as soon as I can, it's Francis Williamson, of course. Francis Williamson, number 30, not in the programme, but he's out there in the race. And we saw going into the hairpin once again, Jim Moody had a problem. We have a yes, and he's through. Number five, Phil Ball is through into first position now, but we saw the problem at the hairpin once again. Jim Moody's machine was hopping and jumping into that corner, and without a doubt, he's losing time now. Well, if I can get a second, if nothing dramatic happens to these three, I'll just tell you quickly that the reason that Reynolds was excluded was the fact that these machines have to comply virtually to a road specification. They're a production bike, and the Kawasaki was fitted with 250cc handlebars, and they are lower. Therefore, Reynolds was able to get down lower on the tank, get down behind the bubble, and hopefully gain a bit more speed. But unluckily for him, the handlebar height was measured and he was therefore excluded from the Thruxton meeting, which closed the gap right up because he had a handsome lead in the championship. Steve, I suppose the temptation just to modify the machine slightly is always there. Yeah, well, this class of racing is very hard to police because there is so many modifications that you could do to, to, uh, to improve the machine, but I don't think moving the handlebars would have made a great deal of difference. It's a little bit petty, but there was a protest put in, and you have to stick to the rules, otherwise the championship wouldn't be a proper championship, but it doesn't seem to have slowed him a great deal because he's running in fourth spot and uh, staying here with the leaders. Race leader now, number five, Phil Borley from South End. 
Borley, 25 years of age, fifth in the 1989 600cc Super Cup Series. That's why he's carrying the number five on his machine. Jim Moody, number 21, is still very much in touch. On the FZR 600, the 26-year-old Glaswegian Jim Moody is right there, not letting go for a minute. Number 37, Steve Ives, nearly halfway into the race, is still in third, albeit just a fraction now off the pace. But Ives, very well assured by his pit crew that he's in a nice place, not too bothered about Moody. A little more bothered, however, about Phil Borley because he's really flying now, the man from South End on Sea. Borley, round the hairpin, down towards the chicane. John Reynolds is closing on the third place man. So now a battle developing between John Reynolds, number 16, in your picture. There's number 33, and that is Mark Farmer, who had a brilliant ride at Brands Hatch last week. Farmer took the 600cc class and the 750cc class at Brands last week, so he's very much in form at the moment, and he's running in fifth place. Number 33, Mark Farmer. Jim Moody's machine does seem a little bit quicker down the straight. He's in the slipstream of Phil Borley, but he's got on the inside, but no, he can't get through. He, he went for the inside line, but he seems to be losing out at the hairpin. The machine is quicker down the straight, but uh, as we saw earlier, he's got some handling problems going into the corner. Again, you can see that uh, Borley's machine is quite stable in there, but Moody's is jumping around everywhere. A little bit of motocross there for Jim Moody going in, but he's riding really well because it can't be easy to contain that sort of juddering. There is Mark Farmer, number 33, on the Colin Ald Aldridge Yamaha, in fifth place, but a bit distant from the leading four. Reynolds has closed right down on Steve Ives. Moody has closed down on Borley again. Jim Moody hasn't given up at all. He's really scrapping. Steve, that sort of handling problem, is that going to get worse as the race goes on? Yes, it could easily do, because the front four coil uh, probably gets thinner as the temperature rises, and it could get worse as the race goes on. But these front uh, two machines are virtually identical, in fact, the front three, but the rider does have the choice to fit different four coils and different springs and suspension modifications, and that's really what's down to maybe winning races, is being able to set your machine up so it handles properly. There's a lot of uh, effort and skill involved in that. Borley through the chicane. On the St. Neots motorcycles, FZR, Yamaha. So, the 600 Yamaha, Phil Borley going very well indeed. Also, currently well up in the 600cc national championship, apart from the Super Cup series. 600 class is a class which Borley rides extremely well, and on his best days he's unbeatable and he's having one of those better occasions here at Mallory Park without a doubt despite the advances of Jim Moody who is just over a tenth of a second behind him I mean there's nothing between these top three and John Reynolds now has fallen away a little bit as has Mark Farmer the fifth place man number 33 number 30 Francis Williamson is in sixth and Russ Dreyer is in seventh so Russ Dreyer gave us a good ride at Thruxton He's doing equally well here, but at the front, the tussle for the lead has pulled them away, as we've seen it so many times in recent weeks. They just drag themselves away. The conditions here, and the circuit, Steve, has been resurfaced obviously much better now. Yes, the, the lap times have come down nearly a second since uh, since last year because of the resurfacing. They've, they've ironed out some of the bumps on the, this notoriously bumpy circuit. It's improved it a great deal. There's a lot more grip, but... I'm, uh, I'm very concerned about number 21, Jim Moody. I think he's, gonna, he's not careful, he's going to end up in a heap at the hairpin because he's trying to break as late as, as uh, Phil Borley and he's got serious handling problems. His balls are bottoming the whole time, you see. He's hopping and skipping it. If he doesn't watch out, he'll just lose traction and he'll end up uh, in a heap, as I said earlier. John Reynolds, number 16, is now back in fourth place on the pace with them, so he's pulled them in. Those top four now are having the race. It's all about first and second and third and fourth as Reynolds comes out of the slipstream of number 37, Steve Ives. But Steve Ives' machine, beautifully prepared, going well and serving him nicely. Two-thirds of the race gone now. The 600s absolutely alight, just as exciting as ever. The four in front have left number 33, Mark Farmer, in their wheel tracks. Borley will have to watch it because from where...
Jim Moody is sitting, he could quite easily pip him to the post out of the last turn. And Moody's a brave, brave warrior indeed. The machine, he must be having one heck of a job holding on to it there, but still he's as game as ever. Yeah, he's certainly not giving in. He nearly lost it coming out of the corner there. The tyres are getting rather hot and, and uh, heating up, so they do lose a little bit of grip that they had at the beginning of the race. And, uh, but it's the same for everyone. There's a lot of manufacturers really involved in this 600 class, but the tyres are very similar. And uh, we get a different winner each week. Yes, I'm impressed with Mr. Moody, he's certainly a trier. He's run a little wide at Gerrard's there, not the ideal line. I think we'll see uh, Borley stretch that lead a bit, but no, as I say, so Moody closes in on the exit. Well, seven points, which is what Steve Ives will pick up. In fact, Tony won't, he'll pick up eight points, I beg your pardon. That will move him on nicely to 36, so Steve Ives is very well aware of just what he's doing in the race and what impact it will have on his championship standings. There is one more round to go after this. That is at Donington Park at the end of the month, so we will have to wait, I suspect, until Donington to see whether, in fact, Steve Ives lifts the championship or whether John Reynolds on the Kawasaki, who is indeed the big threat to Steve Ives, he is only one point behind him. The, point at the, the, the battle in the championship is about third and fourth place in this race, Steve, because those two men are only separated by one point. That's right, it's very, very close at the moment, but uh, these two here are not at all worried about the championship points at the moment. Mr. Mood is quite intent on taking the lead. I just hope he doesn't do it at the hairpin. Phil Borley, number five, still leads Jim Moody. They've now left John Reynolds, who's up to third, so Reynolds is now past Steve Ives. Mathematically, they are now tying on championship points. Steve Ives would have been getting the message loud and clear that Reynolds was coming, John Reynolds was behind him. John Reynolds has got his head down, he's flat out on the Team Green Kawasaki down towards Gerrards. So, number 16, 27-year-old John Reynolds, a graduate of the Ron Haslam School of Racing, is on his way to third place and eight points. Eight points added to his 27 will give him 35. And if Steve Ives stays where he is, he too will collect 35 points. So we will have a dead heat situation going into the last round and everything to look forward to at Donington Park. Meanwhile, back at the front, Steve Parrish bumping my leg because he, just like I, cannot get over the way Jim Moody is throwing that machine around incredible stuff, Steve. Yes, it really is. I think maybe I should go and have a word with him afterwards and help him set it up, because I've got a bird's eye view of what's wrong at the moment, but I'm sure, as we spoke earlier, he'll probably be watching this when he gets home and, uh, and see what modifications he can make. But he's probably wishing he could make those modifications now as he goes into the hairpin with it all bouncing around, but unfortunately, that's what you're supposed to do after practice or before practice even and get the machine set up properly. So it's part of the battle. It's not always the fastest man rider, it's the man that can set his machine up properly, especially in this 600cc class. And dare I say, Steve, as well, uh, let's throw this one at you. Could finance come into it? Yeah, very much so, but the problem he has there, as I said earlier, I think it's down to he needs a heavier front forecourt and a slightly heavier front spring, but uh, finance does come into it to a certain extent because it's down to who can afford to go testing, and uh, if you can go testing regularly, then you can get your machine set up a lot better. That was almost a contemptuous glance over the left shoulder of John Reynolds, number 16. He had a good, long, casual look back to see where Steve Ives was, and he's confident in the knowledge now that he will be equal with Ives on championship points, but what John Reynolds would like to do, I'm sure, on the penultimate lap is wind in the two ahead of him. Frankly, I don't think he has much chance of that because from the word go, Jim Moody rode that machine brilliantly well. The Yamaha FZR going like nothing away from the gate. Unbelievable. And Phil Borley, the pole position man and the lap record holder, had to really work hard to stay with him. 93.41, Borley has gone round and that is already inside last year's lap record, set September 1989 at the Super Cup meeting here. 
93.94. So the lap record has gone in this race to Phil Borley as he storms in second place. No, he's not, he's in the lead. I'm sorry. Ahead of Jim Moody on the last lap with about 40 seconds remaining. Well, a good race by Moody. Yeah, very much so. He had a glance over his shoulder as he exited the uh, bus stop chicane. And at that time, um, he was uh, only a little bit in front, but he has more of a lead than he thinks. As you can see, he pulled over to get... Uh, to get the second place man out of the slipstream, but it wasn't necessary because he's not close enough to do so. So uh, Phil Borley having a wonderful ride. So it's looking now as though Phil Borley, 25 years of age, will add the Mallory Park Super Cup 600cc Super Sport round to his long list of successes over the years, and particularly the successes he's had, 1989, 1990. Borley gets it. Jim Moody, number 21, goes over in second. John Reynolds is third. Then it's Steve Ives who collects fourth. In fifth place, number 33, Mark Farmer. And in sixth place, number 54, Steve Tobes, who qualified on the front row. But there's your winner, number five from Southend, Phil Borley. So let's take a look now at the top six as Borley acknowledges the recognition from the crowd. Jim Moody, Reynolds, Ives, Farmer, Tomes and Donington will be interesting indeed. Yes, that race will certainly be one of the highlights of our coverage from Donington on September the 30th. The championship lies between three riders, but most particularly between Steve Ives and John Reynolds.